in John, you know, Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so at, at the love in that passage anyway is talking about this, mm -hmm. uh, about it's, it's, it's true that like the people in the world, if I confront any type of sin in their life, they would see that as unloving. There's, there's nothing you, there's nothing we can do about that. That's just the way they have redefined love. But what we can control is in the church mm -hmm. that we are honest with one another, but he says the way that they're going to know uh, that, that you're my disciples is, is this, and this is where we're losing it. You know, you talk about the other countries that are, you know, dividing in, in their, their different denominations and believers at each other's throats, which I've seen also, but gosh, are we known uh, for our love for one another? And what are, what are we doing right now to pursue this oneness that Christ wants of us? Because, okay, I'm not an apologist. Most of you guys know that. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> I, I've tried, you know, it's like my mind goes so far. And, <laughs> and so I need brothers like this so badly. You know, it used to be back in the 90s when a pastor felt like he just had to be everything. I got to know more than everyone else, but, but now it's just like, okay, I just can't, I can't do it. All. I'm not going to be the best Bible teacher or the, the best scholar and the best counselor and the best leader and the best apologist. So I need this. But a lot of times when I, when I encounter someone who is a scholar, I get intimidated. I think a lot of us do. We just feel stupid, right? And, and usually they'll tell us why we are stupid, you know, and, and they're like, yeah, I knew it, I knew it, and you just proved it to me. I already knew that. Tell me something I don't know. And so, but I remember, you know, one of the times, Ravi, you know, I, it might have been our first time meeting, and we were both going to speak in an event, and he just comes up to me and just hugs me and tells me how much he loves me and thanks God. I think he just started praying, God, it is such an honor to share the stage with this man. Francis, I am so honored to be on the same stage. Do you know what that does for a person who's already feeling insecure and, and everything else? And then him saying, no, I'm honored to be with you. Your contribution to the body of Christ, like a father, like love. It was so foreign to me to be loved by a scholar. The fact that that feels so foreign is an indictment of where we're at. And I get it, and I want to be the first to apologize. Like, I can get so fired up about my thing is to love you deeply, like for this oneness. And, and the Bible is saying when that happens in the church, that's when the world's going to know that we're his disciples. I think it's obviously critically important to remember this, that Jesus said they will know you by how you love each other. And... Um, it's, it's important in church to hold each other accountable, but it's important not just to do that and love each other. And I think like Apollos, uh, written about in the New Testament, was taught the gospel more accurately, I think the Bible says. And I think we all, on a well, hopefully we all on a road to sanctification and holiness and becoming more Christ-like. So this is important, to love each other on the journey we all are on. Obviously, this does not allow for false doctrine, but for Bible-believing Christians, this is important.